Since the recent passing of Samsung Group Chairman Lee Kuan Yew, an intriguing point of concern has been the apparent formality that his son, Vice Chairman Lee Jae-yong, will rise to the Samsung throne. Since his father had been ailing for years, the junior Lee was already recognised as the corporate giant's de facto chief. But this succession raises issues surrounding large family-run conglomerates in Korea, or Chebol. Which are often the subject of scrutiny concerning how much economic growth they are responsible for, while perhaps lacking fairness. Scandals range from the Korean Air nut rage incident to Samsung's involvement in the case that brought down now imprisoned ex-president Park Geun-hye. Her successor, President Moon Jae-in, took office in 2017, vowing to reform Chebol, while then relying on them in the face of Japanese trade restrictions and an unprecedented pandemic. Like other Chebol that grew fast after the Korean War, the Samsung ruling family is now stepping into its third generation of leadership. While nepotism, family feuds, and a complex web of affiliates have often overshadowed these groups, they've also made themselves vital to the nation's economy. A report released by the Korea CXO Institute this summer showed that the revenues posted last year by 64 Chebol accounted for 84% of the country's GDP. But they were only responsible for around 10% of the jobs here, making competition for those jobs fierce. Among other criticisms, Chebol are accused of stifling competition, buying up real estate, and forging cozy ties with public officials. When their leaders have been found guilty of corruption, they've either been let off lightly or pardoned, as we've seen with both Lee Jae-yong and his late father. And of all the Chebol, Samsung is supreme. The group generated around a fifth of the country's entire GDP on its own last year. Yet it's not all been smooth for Lee Jae-yong. His legal battles go on despite his looming promotion, as he was indicted last month for his alleged role in a controversial merger and fraudulent accounting related to his expected succession. The 52-year-old's also up against another round of trials related to ex-president Park's conviction on the orders of the top court, even though he already served around a year in prison. Plus, he will be watched closely as Samsung's ruling family is set to pay more than 10 trillion won, or nearly 9 billion US dollars, in inheritance tax following his father's passing. It's estimated to be that high because the tax rate is almost 65% in this case, which some critics argue is unfair in itself. In addition to political pressure by ruling party lawmakers, the inheritance issue may force E to sell stakes in Samsung affiliates, threatening his grip on power. Incidentally. The group has close to 60 affiliates, covering almost every possible business area. But could Samsung now lead corporate reform to end the Chebol era? Lee Jae-yong made a rare public apology back in May over controversies surrounding his succession, and he vowed not to pass on managerial power to his children. In other signs of reform, he promised to scrap the group's no labor union policy and actively communicate on enhancing compliance culture. Some might be concerned that someone like Lee is not only a businessman who represents Samsung, but also South Korea generally. But others point out that the conglomerate did just fine when he already spent a year in prison, actually seeing a significant increase in profits during that time. And at a time when business leadership's more important than ever as the global economy suffers, it's not a good look to pass power according to bloodlines rather than based on expertise.